We are still on our series, Your Helper, the Holy Spirit. Everybody say, Your Helper, the Holy Spirit. Say, My Helper, the Holy Spirit. So today we're going to talk about praying in the Spirit. Everybody say, Praying in the Spirit. Ephesians chapter 6, and verse 18. Can we read it together on the screen, everybody? One to go read. Are you in church today? Are you, are you alive in church today? The church is for alive people. Glory to God. Can we read it live this morning? Want to go read? In the spirit. Uh huh. Perseverance. Of our saying. Notice, I want you to mark something in your Bible, which is very important. We're talking about praying in the spirit. The Bible says, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. Look at Jude chapter 1 verse 20. Jude chapter 1 verse 20. It says, but you, beloved, it says, building yourselves up on your most holy faith. How do you do it? Praying in the Holy Ghost. Everybody say, praying in the Spirit. Say it again. Say, praying in the Spirit. Now, listen. You know, people don't understand why the Old Testament is more than the New Testament. Listen. The New Testament is quality of words, but the Old Testament are pictures. Are you listening? If you want to draw pictures, you need more paper. If you want to write, you need less paper. But if you want to draw things and draw pictures, you need more and more diary. Now, the Old Testament is a picture that we can learn things from. Now, we're going to study about praying in the Spirit from the Old Testament. And we're going to see the importance of how, is, how, how very, very important it is for us to pray in the Spirit from a story. Of Moses. Now I'll tell you the background. Exodus, um, Exodus, chapter seventeen. We'll still come back to this Jude one. You know, for now, we'll still come back. Now let, let me get the background of the story. Now Amalek was about to fight Israel, and God gave Moses a strategy of how to win the battle. Are you listening? Now He told him something to do, and He did it and won the battle. Now let's look at that story this morning. Exodus seventeen from verse eight. Bible says, then came Amalek and fought with Israel in Rephidim. And Moses said to Joshua, choose us out men and go out. Fight with Amalek. So tomorrow I will stand on the top of the mountain with the rod of God in my hand. So Moses said that you guys will go and fight in the ground. I will go to the top of the mountain with the rod of God in my hand. Joshua did as Moses had said to him and fought with Amalek and Moses, everybody say Moses, Aaron, and Horn. Uh huh. Mark these three men. We're going to talk about them. Went up to the top of the hill. Now look at verse 11. Mankova Aki. Read, everybody want to go. And it came to pass when Moses held up his hand that Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hand, what happened? Look at the start. So it was, this is not very interesting. It now showed that the winning of the battle had nothing to do with how they are fighting the battle on the ground. It had more to do with the positioning of Moses' hand. The Bible says that as Moses lifted up his hands, Israel prevailed. When his hands were down, what happened? Amalek prevailed. Look at that. Now let's continue. This happened to many of, many of you. When I say lift your hands, after two minutes, no, after 30 seconds, say, My hand is paining me. Then you drop. Now, look at what happened to Moses now. But Moses' hands were heavy. You know, if you hold your hands for a long time, it's going to feel heavy. Are you calling? That's if you have not been trained for long. Then they took a stone, that's Aaron and Horn, and put it under him, and he sat there unto. And Aaron and Horn stayed up his hands. That means Aaron and Horn held up the hand of Moses up. Are you listening to that? Bible says, the one on the one side and the other on the other side. And his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. Next verse, 13. And Moses discomfited, oh boy, discomfited Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. And the Lord said to Moses, write this for a memorial in a book and rehearse it in the ears of Joshua. For I will utterly put out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. Glory to God. The Bible says, and Moses built an altar 
and he called the name of that altar what? Jehovah Nisi. What does it mean? It means the Lord our banner. Everybody say the Lord is my banner. Bible says, for he said, because the Lord has sworn that the Lord will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. Now go back to verse 15. Let me show you something now. Listen. No, go back up 14. 14 now. Look at what God said. God said that, and the Lord said to Moses, write this for a memorial in a book and rehearse it in the ears of Joshua. For I will utterly put out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. Guess what today, brothers and sisters, there's no nation called Amalek today. Do you know that? No nation. Because why? God has wiped them out. But Israel is still existing today. Now listen very carefully. Amalek in this scripture represents the devil. The devil is going to be put out out of remembrance one day. But guess what? It's not going to happen in your generation. You say amen. It's not going to happen. Because the devil is still here fighting you, dealing with you all the time. Attacking you. Are you following? So, but guess what? Look at what the Bible says in verse 16 about, about Satan. God said that because the Lord has sworn that the Lord will have war with Amalek from what? Generation to generation. That means every generation will have to face the devil. In our generation now, we are also facing the devil as well. Glory to God. Say, I have an enemy. And his name is Satan. Do you, believe, do you know that? Your enemy is not your uncle. Your enemy is not your auntie. Your enemy is not that boss in the office. Your enemy is the devil. He's the real enemy. Glory to God. <laughs> He's the real enemy. So you've got to know that you're going to have an enemy and his name is Satan. He's going to fight you in your office, in your home, in your life, in your marriage, in your family, everywhere. He's going to fight you. But you've got to know how to deal and win the war. Because guess what? Joshua won the war against Amalek. Joshua won the war against the devil. Glory to God. So there's going to be a time where Satan will be taken and be put into the lake of fire. Remember, hell is a temporal place. Hell. The Bible says that hell will be carried and be put into the lake of fire. So hell is a temporal place. You see that? So, but we, we are going to face Satan in this generation. Glory to God. I said glory to God. All right, good. Now let's look at Deuteronomy chapter 25 verse 18. Look at it. The Bible says, how he met thee, by the way, and smote the hindmost of thee. Even all that were feeble behind thee, when thou hast faith and weary, he and he feared not God. By the way, I don't know why um, you guys suddenly changed my translations from New King James Version. That's the default we use in this church, not King James. Is that okay? So please, make an adjustment for next time. All right. Praise God. I said praise God. Now, um, let me have Emmanuel come. Daniel, come. Let me show you guys something. Can I have a chair? Bring, come with your chair. Come one of these chairs. Any chair. Come. Let me show you something. Um, ooh, see. Come, bring it here. Bring it here. No, just one chair. Just one chair. All right. So, uh, you can come. You come and sit down on this chair. Let me do the explanation now. Sit down on the chair. So this is Moses. Everybody say Moses. So this is Moses sitting down. Now, you don't have a rod. Now, Moses, raise, raise, raise your two hands up. Moses, no. Actually, stand, stand. So this is what happened. Moses went to the top. Now, you guys are the fight. You, some of you are the Israelites. Some of you are the Amalek. Are you following? Battle is going on in this place now. Now, Moses went onto the top of the mountain. And then, Moses said he had a strategy. I'm going to lift my rod up to the Lord and you see what's going to happen. So now lift your hands up, the two hands up, the two hands up. Now he held the rod on his hand and the two hands were lifted up. Guess what? As his hands were like this, Israel started to win the battle. Are you getting it? Now a time came, Moses' hand began to feel so heavy and then his hand dropped. He, you know, he, he couldn't stay there any longer. Guess what? I started doing that, you know what happened next? Amalek began to what? Prevail against Israel. So Aaron was here, and Horn, whether it's Ha or Horn, I don't even know. Horn was here, or Ha was here. You know, you are calling, he's coming, but our name is, you no, know, you are saying Horn because you are saying H U R. In Hebrew, it's called He. Uh, he exactly. So you say He. Say he's coming, but He is coming. You know, you are confused in English language. Anyway, all right, so stand here. No, stand. So now, this is what happened next. So Aaron and Horn brought a stone for Moses to sit on. Say, sit down, sir. 
We're going to help you now. Now, you hold his hand up. You hold it up. Hold, balance this, please. Yes. So now, this is, everybody say Aaron. Everybody say Horn. <laughs> now, the two of them began to help Moses' hands up like this. Guess what? As Moses' hands were up like this, you know what happened? Israel prevailed. Glory to God. I said glory to God. You know, you know why? Do you know why Israel prevailed? Because this is the sign of prayer. Everybody say prayer. This is the symbol of prayer. In prayer, your hands must be lifted up. Why? Because remember, in those days, when Moses won the battle, there was a new revelation of God that was given to Moses. He was now called Jehovah Nisi. Everybody say Jehovah Nisi. Jehovah Nisi means the Lord is our banner. Now, what's a banner? A banner is not a flag like we see today. Now, a banner was more like a shining, glittering substance that whenever, when, any, when, when um, an army is going for war, they will raise their banner up. Are you listening? Now, as the banner was up, they know that the victory is theirs. But if the banner drops, they've lost the battle. So that's why in those days when they're fighting the battle, someone will go to the top of the mountain and raise his banner up. You see that? And then if the banner drops, somebody else will try and go there and keep the banner up. Because why? As the banner remains up, or we can call it a flag, as the flag remains up, they are prevailing. Glory to God. Now, Moses' banner was his hands. Hallelujah. He didn't carry a flag. He lifted up his hands to the Lord. And as his hands was lifted up to the Lord, he prevailed against Israel. Are you hearing what I'm saying this morning? Brothers and sisters, the Bible lets us know this revelation of Moses. It is a symbol of prayer. Are you seeing that? Sometimes when your hands are tired, lift your hands in prayer. Because it's in the lifting of hands in prayer that you are telling the Lord that you depend on him. You are not trusting in your ability. You are not trusting in your skill. You are not trusting in your effort. You are trusting in him. And the hands lifted up is a sign of prayer. It's a sign of prayer to the Lord. Can you say amen? Now, the Bible lets us know that Satan will be totally wiped out one day. Why? But while we are still on earth, we are still going to deal with Satan from generation to generation. And this is the reason why every Christian has what is called spiritual warfare. Everybody says spiritual warfare. As long as you live in this life, you are going to face spiritual warfare. Satan is going to attack you. Satan is going to come against you. His hands can never be tired because you're helping him up. Is he tired? He, tired? he can never be tired. As long as these two guys help him up, he can stay here for the next one hour. Why? Because there's a help. Everybody said, my help by the Holy Spirit. We are going somewhere with this money. Now, Aaron and Horn represents two people. Aaron represents Jesus. Everybody say Jesus. Remember in the book of Hebrews, the Bible compares Aaron and Jesus. And the Bible lets us know that Jesus is greater than Aaron. Why? Because Aaron was the other, um, huh? Okay, Aaron's priesthood was a temporal priesthood. But the priesthood of Jesus is an everlasting priesthood. Glory to God. Now Jesus is on the one side in heaven. Are you seeing that? Making intercession for us. Making our prayers acceptable to the Father. Now the Holy Spirit is home. Hong is right here. The Holy Spirit is on the other side of heaven, which is the earth. And he's the one helping us to make intercessions to God so that even though we can't order them, he will tell us exactly what to pray about. Most of the time, when we are going through suffering in our life, we don't know what to pray about. Sometimes we, we don't know whether it's deliverance we need or grace that we need. You know, sometimes you are going through a problem and all is in your mind is, Father, let, this, let me be delivered from this problem. But... God's mind is that you, you don't get delivered from that problem. You stay in that problem. You don't even know what to pray about. That's the reason for praying in the Spirit. When you don't, when, see, when you pray with your mind, when you pray with your understanding, you are going to miss God in many things of your life. Glory to God. You are working in an office. Things are tough there. And you are saying, Father, give me a new job. But the mind of the Spirit is that you stay there and work for the next three years. But you don't know because you are praying in your flesh not in the spirit glory to god so when you don't depend on jesus and the holy spirit in your prayer you are going to miss god in a lot of things in your life glory to god everybody say the lord is my banner lift your twin and say the lord is my banner so what is our banner our banner is the lord jesus glory to god Jesus Christ has been lifted up before us now every time we lift our hands we are declaring that jesus is my banner glory to god 
Hallelujah. Thank you. You can sit down. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at Isaiah chapter 11, verse 10 to 12. We have a banner, and his name is the wonderful name Jesus. Give me Isaiah chapter 11. Isaiah 11, 10 to 12. The Bible says, and in that day, there shall be a root of Jesse who shall stand as a banner to the people. His name is Jesus. Glory to God. It says, for the Gentiles shall seek him and his resting place shall be glorious. Glory to God. So Jesus is the captain of our salvation. And the Bible says that the banner over us is what? Is love. Glory to God. So the upraised hand is a picture of prayer. The hot praise hand is a picture of prayer. That means it's a token of our confidence in the Lord. Look at Psalm 28 verse 2. I'm showing you, I'm showing you this thing. How, how your hands are very important. Read everybody want to go. Hear the voice of my supplication when I cry to you. Uh -huh. When I lift my hands towards your word. Every time you lift your hands, it's a sign of prayer. Are you seeing that? We don't pray with our hands folded. We pray with our hands lifted. Hallelujah. Look at 1 Timothy 2 8. Look at what Paul said. Paul said, I desire therefore that men pray what? Everywhere. How? Lifting up holy hands without wrought or doubting. You see that? That's why when you are told to lift your hands in church, lift your hands in prayer, lift them up. Why? Because that's the way God expects us. Because that's our banner. It's a signpost. It's our banner. It's our flag. We're lifting up to heaven. That's why anytime I worship the Lord or I'm praying, my hands are like this. Why? Because I understand this. See, this mystery is only for a few. Who told Moses to lift his hand? Who told him? Where did you sit in the Bible? You didn't sit anywhere, right? There was no law that said, when you want to pray, lift your hands. No law in the Bible. But Moses had this revelation. Look at David also. David said that the lifting of my hands is an evening sacrifice. That's what he said. He said, when I lift my hands, it's equivalent to the sacrifice that they are making there. Lifting hands. And Paul had the same revelation. He said, I wish that men would pray every day, lifting up holy hands. Hallelujah. Why? Because our hands lifted is our show of confidence in the Lord. Is our show of victory in the Lord. Notice, how many of you watch football? You watch football? Notice when, when, when your team wins. How do you celebrate? Goal! Hands are lifted up. Why? When your hands are lifted up, it's the sign of victory. Glory to God. You see that? Now, prayer is very important. James chapter 5 verse 17. James 5 17. The Bible says, Elijah was a man with a nature like ours. And he prayed earnestly that it would not rain. And it did not rain on the land for three years and a half. Look at that. Because of prayer. Listen, brothers and sisters. The battle that Moses faced. The success of that battle was dependent on whether Moses' hands were lifted or they were down. Can you imagine that? He was going to win that battle. If his, if his hands were down, they would lose the battle. If his hands were up, they would win the battle. And as long as his hands were up, it's as long as they are going to have victory. Glory to God. So this is, the, so this is where the battle is lost or this is where the battle is won. The battle is lost or won in our confidence in the Lord. And when we pray in the Spirit, glory to God. And Jesus said something in Luke 18.1. He said, men ought always to pray and not to faint. Men ought always to pray and not to faint. What is the opposite of not praying? Fainting. When you are not praying, you are fainting. When you are not praying, you are losing heart. Look at it here. He says, men ought always to pray and not to lose heart. If you don't pray, you will lose heart. You will give up. Hallelujah. You will give up. Look at Luke 11, from verse 5. Look at what Jesus, Jesus gave a parable here. Hear this parable. And he said to him, which of you shall have a friend? And go to him at midnight and say to him, friend, lend me three loaves. For a friend of mine had come to me for his journey and I have nothing to set before him. Right? He said, and he will answer from within and say, do not trouble me. The door is now shut and my children are with me in bed. I cannot rise and give to you. <laughs> Just imagine having that kind of friend. You went to him at midnight to say, brother, once somebody came from a far journey, I was thinking in my mind, so you had a friend coming from a far journey, I did not prepare for your friend. Anyway, let's leave that one out. So the guy said, ha, a friend of mine just came from a far journey. Brother, do you have bread? Give me some bread. And the guy, went, guy said, ha, please tell me, you are disturbing me. Go home, go home. 
And the Bible says that which of you have that kind of how many of you have that kind of friend? You're lying now. Eh? All right, anyway. So, you know what happened next? The Bible said that the guy kept knocking the gate. He kept banging the gate. He kept banging the gate and banging the gate. Look at what happened next. I say to you, though he will not rise or give to him, hey, up, verse 8. Verse 8. Though he will not rise or give to him, but because he is his friend. Yes. So, he's not going to rise on the bed because he's his friend. Are you following? The reason why he will come out of his bed is because of his persistence. He will rise and give him as many bread as he needs. Jesus said, for I say to you, everybody now, are you ready to read now? I say to you what? Ask and what? He gave it to you, uh-huh. 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 And what happened? And it will be open to you. Some of you have that brother who is, who is sleeping over there. Is that they will treat people in their lives. Now, he says, for everyone who asks what? Receives. And he who seeks finds. And he who knocks. What will happen? It will be opened unto him. But look at what Jesus said next. If a son asks for bread, will, he, will his father give him a stone? If he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent instead of a fish? No. The next verse says, if God, he said, if men being natural know how to give good gifts to their children. He said, how much more? Can your heavenly father give the Holy Ghost to them ask? Or he said, good things to them ask? Glory to God. Ask your neighbor, are your hands lifted to the Lord in prayer? What's their answer? <laughs> you see, so you've got to lift the hands that hang down. Lift the hands that hang down. When your hands are, when your hands are down, lift it up in prayer. Lift it up in prayer. Why? Because when you're doing that, you are telling the angels that the Lord is my banner. The Lord is my banner. The Lord is my banner. Hallelujah. The Lord is my banner. Listen, Romans chapter 8. Or, or give me, give me um, Romans 8 verse 26. Yeah. Okay, or no, give me 34 first. Then we'll go 26. Let me show you something. Now look at this way. The Bible says, who is he who condemned? It is Christ who died. And furthermore, is also risen. Who is ever at the right hand of God and who makes intercessions for us? I told you we have how many intercessions? Two. The first intercessor is called Jesus. The second one is called who? The Holy Spirit. Glory to God. Now, we have two divine intercessors. The Bible lets us know. Jesus and the Holy Spirit are our two divine intercessors. Jesus is on his, the side of heaven and the Holy Spirit is on this side of heaven on the earth making intercessions for us and Jesus is also there making our requests in heaven. Look at that. We have both ways secured. The transmission is secure. From this place to this place. Holy Spirit to Jesus. Come on. <laughs> Why won't your prayer be answered? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Look at Romans chapter 8 verse 26. Bible says, likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses. In our weaknesses. What is the weakness that we have? He says, for we do not know what we should pray as we ought to. That's the weakness that we have. When you are faced with problems in your life, sometimes you don't know what to pray about. You want deliverance. You don't know whether you should stay here, whether you should go. You don't know what to pray. He says, but the Spirit himself makes intercessions for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Hallelujah. There are times in our lives we don't know what to pray. And that's the weakness that we have. And listen, Jesus never promised us that in life we will never go through problems. He never said to. In life you will go through problems, you will go through challenges, you will go through all manners of things. But the question is, when it comes to prayer, where will your confidence be? Will it be in your ability Will it be your grammar arrangement? Will it be in your sophisticated vocabulary? Or will it be in the spirit? That's the real question. You see that? So say, I am not immune to sufferings. The problem is that we don't know what we should pray for. That is the real problem. We don't know what is best for us. And sometimes we don't know whether it's deliverance we need or whether it's grace we need to go through that problem. That's what we don't know. Even Jesus and Paul at certain times in their life, they didn't know what they should pray for. You know, one time Jesus got very close. He said, Father, Kai, if it is left to me, I give up. He said, but let your will be done. Even Paul at times in his prayer, he didn't know what to pray for. But he trusted in the prayer in the spirit. He trusted in the Holy Ghost making intercession for him. Hallelujah. 
What does the Holy Spirit mean? The Holy Spirit is our help in times of problems. That means he will take hold of anything in our lives. Together and with us, he will be with us through the problem. Look at Luke 10, 40. The same word used there as help. Luke 10, 40. Luke chapter 10, verse 40. Bible says, but mother was distracted with month seven. And she approached him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve another? He says, therefore, tell her to help me. That means let her come and take a hold of the problem I'm facing in my life. So the Holy Spirit, as your helper, he's the one helping you to bear up the situation. He's helping you to bear up the circumstances in your life. Glory to God. That means he's the one that makes intercessions for us. That means he's, he's our advocate on our behalf. You know what an advocate is? An advocate, a lawyer, is the one that tells you what exactly to say when you're asked a question. When you go to a call and they ask you a question about a situation, your advocate will tell you what exactly to say. What you should not say and what you should say. You know, I watched one movie one time. The lawyer told the guy, when they ask you any question, tell them you have nothing to say. So they put the guy on witness chair. The lawyer started to fire him. He said, I decline to answer. Next question, I decline to answer. Next question, I decline to answer. The guy was, you know, I know how lawyers can be. He started to choke him and choke him. The guy was ready. He said, I decline to answer. I decline to answer. And that was all. The guy said nothing on the witness chair. Why? Because that's what his advocate told him to say. So the Holy Spirit is our advocate in times of prayer. When we are faced with situations, we don't know what to do next. He's the one that will tell us exactly what to say. He's the one that will help us to end that on that behalf. Glory to God. That's why he's called our helper. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. So the Holy Spirit gives us heaven's perspective in prayer. Heaven's perspective in prayer. You are there asking God, Father, give me a car. And the Holy Spirit is saying, you don't need it yet. You see that? You don't, and you are, you are believing God. And people are going you don't need it yet. You don't need it yet. You see that? And then there are those of you who are supposed to have it. And you don't still have it. And you are still complaining and complaining. And the Spirit of God say, it's time to have it. It's your season to have it. So because he's the one that knows heaven's perspective about your life. So if you depend on the Holy Spirit in your prayer, you always get results. Hallelujah. Look at 1 John 5, 14 to, to, to 15. 1 John 5. The Bible says, oh, I like this one. It's one of my best scriptures. The Bible says, and this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything, everybody say anything. What is anything? What is anything? Everything. If we ask what, how many things? But how? According to his will. What happens next? All right, hold on. Have you ever said this like when we pray, God says no or God says yes? How many of you have heard that before? When, you, when I pray, God can say no, God can say yes. You heard that before? Now, Notice what John is saying. John is not talking about God saying yes or God saying no. Read again if everybody wants to go. Uh-huh. What happens? Okay. So, if, if God's will is that this problem they are going through, there will be deliverance. Now, if I say, Father, I proclaim today, I am delivered from this problem. What happens? Who talk to me now, everybody? He hears. Now, if I sit down there and say, Father, give me grace to go through this problem. What happens to God? No, he does not hear. Hey, you're not catching it now. Let me go through it again. If the will of God for me in this problem is that I get delivered from it, that's God's will for me in this, in this problem. Then I start to pray, Father, I am delivered from this problem. What happens to God? He hears. Now, when I say, Father, give me grace to go through this problem, what happens to God? He does not hear. Mm -hmm. Now, you are catching it now. What does that tell you? The problem is in the hearing of God. When you pray, some, some of you, <laughs> the prayers you are praying, God in hear If you like, shout. Someone say, let your prayer pass the ceiling. Yeah. Have, you, have you thought about it? Do you know where God, do you know where God is? It was not in us. Do you know where God is? He's in heaven, right? How loud do you want to pray for somebody in an aircraft to hear you? 
No, let's do the analysis. How loud do you want to pray? If you like carry speakers, if you are flying 30,000 feet above the ground level, sea level, no, you can't hear what's going on. Even if they are bombarding the whole, you'll be seeing the sparks. Are you going to see? Now God, <laughs> God is far away. So it's not by the intensity, by how you are dying, how you are squeezing your body. That's all those things is for yourself. It's not for God. I hear I'm telling you. Mm -hmm. So now, now the next part is this now. But guess what? God lives in you. Isn't that powerful? Jesus said, I am with you always. That means wherever you are, he's right there with you. You see that? So somebody say, Let, brothers and sisters, let's pray so our prayer will pass the ceiling. No, brother. He's inside us. He doesn't need to pass the ceiling. He's already with us. He's right here with us. As, I, as you're talking, he's hearing what you're saying. You see that? So the shouting or the calmness is all about you, not about him. Are you getting the point now? Uh -huh. Now, the question is, the Bible says that when we pray, see, this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to whose will? My will? Whose will? His will? What happens? So the question is, how do you know God's will for your life? Through the Holy Spirit. He knows your timetable. He knows your life. He knows everything about your life. He knows the school you should go to and the school not to go to. He knows the place you should walk and where not to walk. He knows the business you should do and the one you should not get involved in. He knows the friends you should have and the one you shouldn't have. He knows where you should go and where you should not go. He knows. So it is when you put your confidence in his will. Are you seeing that? Then he tells you what exactly to pray about. You pray that same thing. Guess what happens next? Guess what happens? God hears you. Now, now if God hears you, what happens next? Look at 15. 15 now. Read everybody want to go. Uh-huh. What happens? Uh-huh. Ha-ha. <laughs> so, John is saying that if God hears me, it's done. Are you getting the point now? So, the problem is praying according to the will of God. Praying according to God's plan for my life. That is the real issue. That's the real issue. I said, and, say, and if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions. Why? That we have asked of him. Are you catching it this morning? Say it again. Say, God never says no to any prayer. The Bible says that in Christ, all the promises of God are yes and in him. Amen. So God never says yes and the Bible says he doesn't say yes and nay. He says yes and nay. Yes and no. God doesn't say yes, no. Yes, no. You know, you know sometimes we think that we're doing prayer. God says, eh, all the people that are praying now, 50 people need money. No, I'll give 50 people, I'll give five. No, today I will share half half. Tomorrow I will share. No, 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 that's not the way. That's not how prayer is. That's not how prayer is. The, the real part about prayer is, are you praying according to the will of God? As long as you are praying according to the will of God, he will answer. Hallelujah. What do I know what the will of God? The Bible says, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health, even as you're so prosperous. That's if I in the name of Jesus, I walk in divine health. It will be answered. Why? Because I'm praying according to his will. And his will is that I should not be sick. I should not be in penury. I should not suffer in sickness. Are you seeing that? Why? Because Christ has carried it on my behalf. I said he took my sickness and disease. Hallelujah. If he took it, I will not carry it. Both of us cannot be kind at the same time. If he took it, he took it, I take his health. Glory to God. So, if we pray according to his will, he hears us. Look at that. So, prayer is like an electric circuit. It starts with God and ends with God. Most of the time, the prayers that we pray start with us. We use God and it gets back to us. That's not new covenant prayer. New covenant prayer starts with God and ends with God. What is the purpose of your prayer? Most of the time we pray selfish prayers. Selfish prayers. Why? Because we are not praying in the spirit. We are not praying in the spirit. We are praying in our flesh. We are praying in our minds. We are not infused by the, by the will of God. The will of God is not soaked in our minds. It's not soaked in our hearts. So we are just praying and miss. I know what Jesus said. If you pray and miss, the reason why you don't receive is because you pray and miss. You are shooting bullets but off the targets. Why? Because you are not praying in the will of God. Look at that. Look at the result of praying in the will of God. Romans 8.28. 
Look at that. It says, and we know that all things work together for good to those who, are, who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. It's about him. 1 Corinthians 2 verse 9 to 12. How many of you like this scripture? The one on the screen now. You like the scripture? Now look at it. It says, as it is written. That means this was in the Old Testament. Are you following? It says, eyes have not seen, nor ears heard, right? Nor has it entered into the heart of men the things which God has prepared for those who love him. Lift your hand and say together, I'm saying the name of Jesus. Say, God has prepared beautiful things for me. But notice, how will you know the beautiful things that God has prepared for you? Next verse. He says, but God revealed them through us. How? Through his Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things. Yes, the deep things of God. He says, for what man knows the things of a man except the Spirit of God who is from God. That we might know the things that are freely given to us by God. Look at that. He says, now we have received not the spirit of this world, but the spirit which is of God. He says, that we might know the things that are freely given to us. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. So God alone knows what is good for you. I'm telling you. God knows what is best for you. He knows. He, he, he knows too, too many things about you. And he has prepared them for you. Glory to God. And God reveals them to us by his spirit. That's why when we are praying not according to God's will, we miss God in many things. For instance, somebody is praying about who to marry. They say, Father, send me a lady that is slim, a lady that has brain, a lady that is fine. That's the, the one that is very spiritual. That's the one I want to go, oh Lord. And the Holy Spirit is looking at him. But that's not God's will for you. God's will is that you don't even marry in the first place. I, I get in the point now. And then he's praying and asking God for a lady. But God's will is for you not to marry. But because he has not, is not in sync with the Spirit of God, guess what? That prayer cannot be answered because God will never hear the prayer in the first place. Because not praying according to God's will. So he'll be using his human effort and he'll just keep failing. He, he, he entered the first marriage, divorce. Second one, divorce. You know, I know people that have done five marriages. So if somebody has done five marriage and the guy divorced in all the five, so who is not the problem? <laughs> That's for you to think about. But anyway, so I, I, are you following what I'm saying this morning? You've got to know God's will for your life. And this is one of the reasons why it's important to learn how to pray in the spirit. Notice, I didn't talk about praying with the spirit. Praying with the spirit is speaking in tongues. I'm talking about praying in the Spirit. Jude 1 20 again, amplified. How do you pray in the Spirit? I'll tell you how you pray in the Spirit. Read everybody want to go. Hiya. Uh huh. Uh huh. How? If you are going to rise like an edifice, Higher and higher, you must learn to pray in the spirit. How do you pray in the spirit? Number one, you pray with prophecy. You pray with prophecy. The Bible says that I wish that all will prophesy. Every Christian is supposed to prophesy. What is prophecy? Prophecy, the one is talking about, see, there are two kinds of prophecy. The first one is uh, pro prophecy in the office of a prophet. Now, that one has to do with foretelling. Are you seeing that? It's his office. It comes with revelation, it comes with um, visions. Of the spirit. The spirit of God showed them either open vision, a trance, or normal vision, whichever form. And the person can see in the spirit and tell you God's mind about your life. Are you following? Now, the second type of prophecy is called false telling. Everybody say false telling. Say it again. Say false telling. Now, for instance, I may be praying now, and then I can just go to this brother and say, God said I should tell you everything is settled. Everything is settled. Now, notice, I don't know what he is going through. I don't know what he's passing through. Listen very carefully. I just told him the mind of God. Now, he will be comforted by what I've told him. Why? Because he knows what God is talking about. Pastor, that prophecy is for comfort, for edification, and for exhortation. Are you seeing that? So now, sit down. So now, what is foretelling? This is what foretelling means. Now, 
I rise up on the bed. I know God's will for my life, right? I use my words and I speak them forth. So I say, I'm rising like an edifice higher and higher in the name of Jesus. I'm flying on eagle's wings. That's prophecy. Say, I will not die, but live and declare the works of God. You see that? I enjoy God's favor every day of my life. I enjoy his blessings every day. There's favor for me on the left and on the right. Everywhere I go, I have preferential treatment. So that's prophecy you're doing right there. And God wants every one of you to prophesy. Everybody prophesy. If your life is going the wrong direction, right? With prophecy, you can change the course of your life. You can do it with prophecy. That's the power that you have inside of you. But most of the time, you use your mouth to speak evil. And the Bible says that they that love life and want to see good days, it says refrain your tongue and your mouth from speaking evil. If you want to see good days in your life, stop speaking evil things. Stop saying things are bad. Things are going down. You are going to see bad days because you are prophesying evil. Let me tell you something. There was a professor that did these studies with students. He told the students, he says, when you go back home, plant, do two plant. Put them far apart. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He said, every day, go to the first plant and speak blessings to the first plant. He said, the second one, speak curses to it. So the students, you know, touch children. Every day they go. You are beautiful. You are blessed. You will grow with beautiful leaves. You will expand on every side. The other one, you are cursed from the roots. Your leaves will wither. You will not bring up any ball. You will not produce any fruits. Guess what? By the time they did the research completely, you know what happened? The ones that they spoke blessings to grew. The ones that they caused were struggling to grow. Now, this is not Christians. This is science. The power of words. Now, imagine you have the Holy Spirit in you. And then things are going bad, you keep quiet. You fold your hands and say, well, if God, uh, so we say, um, how do you say that thing? What will be, will be, O oh Lord. Let what you will, let it happen. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, the will of God doesn't always come to pass. You've got to war with prophecy, the Bible says. You've got to make war with prophecy. You can't just keep quiet. See, if God has told you that you're a shining light, and then you see darkness around you, you know what happened to Elijah? God said, can these bones live? He said, God, in this matter, only you know. Then you know what God told him? God didn't say, yes, I can do everything. You know what God told him next? God says, say to these dry bones. He says, life coming to you. And guess what? It happened. He said, as I was commanded, I said. Listen very carefully. As I was commanded. So the question is, what you are saying, are you commanded to say it? Are you following this morning? Are you still here? Are you still here? Okay, good. Now, it's important that you learn to prophesy. That's how to pray in the spirit. Hello? Number two. Praying with your understanding. Praying with your understanding. Praying with your understanding. But you see, your understanding must be infused with God's word. Because I can pray with my understanding out of fear. I can pray with my mind out of feelings. But I can also pray with my mind in the spirit as well. I'm not praying what I feel like praying. I'm not praying what I'm enjoying praying. I'm praying because that's what the spirit of God is ministering to me to pray about. Are you following the third way of praying in the spirit is praying with your spirit. With your spirit. How do you pray with your spirit? You pray. Notice, I can pray with my mind and I can also pray with my spirit. Because you are a human spirit. So, I can pray now and pray with my mind. I can pray now and pray with my spirit. Now, I'll tell you something that happened. This is on YouTube. You can check on YouTube as well. There was a scientist. He has been hearing about this speaking in tongue stuff. And then he said, this, he doesn't believe all these guys. Because they are saying that, because, because we say that when we pray, because Paul said, when I pray with my spirit, he said that my mind is unfruitful. That means my, the words I'm saying are not coming from my brain. The guy says it's a lie. It's a lie. So he went to a church. He picked the pastor. He picked some choir members. He picked some other people in the church, the prayer people. He said he should come to his lab. So they came to his lab. Then he put his wires on their mind. So you can see their mind on the computer. So he said, Pastor, pray in your understanding. So the pastor began to pray for the doctor, pray for the, the scientists, pray for their research. And the man observed something on the machine. 
As the man was praying in English language, right? He saw his mind was active. His mind was moving, making motion. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Then he not told the man, switch to praying with your spirit now. The man said, go para kase pora hada lamande ragaba. Then the scientists became confused because the guy is talking, but his mind is sleeping. So he said, maybe this one is a mistake. He picked the second person again. He did the same thing. The third person, fourth person, up to ten people. He, when, when they asked him, they said, sir, what's your conclusion? He said, well, from what he's seen on the, on the machine, when they are praying in tongues, their mind is not moving. When they are praying in English, their mind is moving. He said, but I'm not sure what's going on. He said, but I need to do further research. He, he was confused. He was confused. Now, science is discovering what the word of God has told us 2,000 years ago. Are you following? When you're praying in tongues, you're praying with your human spirit. Your human spirit has a language. And the words you're speaking don't come from your mind. They come from your human spirit. Glory to God. They come from your human spirit. That's why when I pray in tongues, it doesn't, that's why if you know this very carefully, if you're not careful, if you're praying in tongues, you can even sleep. If you're, your, if you're lying down on your bed. Why? Because your mind is resting. Your mind is not thinking. And that's why sometimes too, when you start praying in your, with your spirit, your mind will start remembering all the things that you did not do for that day. Before you know, you remember that you did not take your clothes for laundry. You did not call that person. You forgot to send that message. But why? Because when your mind is still, then your mind becomes alert. When your mind, when you see, because when you're, when you're in so much worry, anxiety, your mind is busy, you can't really focus. But when your mind is calm, right? You, are not, you cannot be precise in your mind. But you see, brothers and sisters, when you pray with your spirit, that's how to pray in the spirit. And let me tell you something. One of the beautiful ways of praying with your spirit is that when you pray with your spirit, the spirit of God also now begins to put words in your mind. Put words in your mind. So that when you switch your understanding, you are praying what the spirit of God has already deposited in your heart. Hallelujah. See, I will pray with the spirit. I will pray with my understanding. And I will pray with prophecy. That's how to pray with your spirit. That's, that, that's how to pray in the spirit. Glory to God. So these prayers are not selfish prayers. They are not prayers just based on our abilities. They are prayers dependent on the power of the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Look at, um, oh, thank you guys. Look at it. It says, for if I pray in a tongue, it says, my spirit prays. Notice that? It says, my spirit prays, but my understanding is unfruitful. Look at the next verse. What is it then? I will pray with. Notice, notice it didn't say in. Are you seeing that? I will pray with the Spirit, and I will also pray with the understanding. I will, I will sing with the Spirit, and I will also sing with the understanding. That means you can sing with your Spirit, and I can sing with my understanding. For instance, now, I can sing, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. That's singing in my understanding. Are you seeing that? I can also sing in tongues like I do. See that? Now, the, when I'm singing in tongues, they're not coming from my mouth. That's why you cannot understand what I'm singing. Except I give you the interpretation. Now, when I interpret the tongues I'm speaking, it also equals prophecy. Because prophecy is inspired words of the Spirit in your understanding. But speaking in tongues is inspired words of the Spirit not in your understanding. Hallelujah. So the Spirit of God helps make supplications in us according to the will of God. He formulates strong desires in us to do His will. He unites us with the will of God and the purpose of God. That's the reason why it is important to pray with your spirit more often. Why? Because when you pray with your spirit more often, your spirit is alert to the will of God, to the mind of God. For instance, let me tell you something that happens many, many times. You are praying with your spirit, right, for a long a period of time, and the spirit of God begins to tell you, pray about your brother. Pray about your brother. You don't know what's happened to your brother. You don't know what's going on there, but you start praying for him. And then later on, when you stop to him, you realize that he was going through a circumstance. But you were the answer to his prayer. Hallelujah. Why? Because you were praying with your spirit. Why? Because see, the problem is that for many Christians, their human spirit is sleeping. They are walking around the day, but their human spirit is so dull. He's sleeping. You know why he's sleeping? Because they don't, they are, they are, look, 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 look at it for instance, right? If, um, if you're in the house, you don't talk, you just keep quiet, you stay by yourself, what happens to you next? Sleep may take over you, right? Now, how many of you, when you woke up this morning from the bed, you just jumped up from the bed as you woke up? 
How many of you are this morning? Anybody like that? What happened to you? When you woke up, you still tried to boot your brain, right? Boot your mind, and then you stood up. Guess what? We have mastered the act of waking up our minds. But we have not mastered the art of waking up our human spirit. So you can even go and brush your teeth, bath, dress, but your human spirit is still sleeping. <laughs> and then you are wondering why Satan is having his few days. Because when Satan attacks you, Satan doesn't attack you physically. He attacks you spiritually. And when you attack a sleeping man, how can he defend himself? He is more like a chicken. Roasted one for that matter. The Bible tells us the fastest way in activating your human spirit is praying with your spirit. You know why? If you woke up from sleep and start talking, your mind will get active instantly. In the same way, if you wake up from the sleep and start speaking in tongues, your human spirit will become a lot to God. So, you can, so if, you, if you want to wake up your human spirit, speak in tongues. Is that I'll tell you the secret. Speak in tongues. Your human spirit will become a lot. Before you know, you will just sit down in your chair and God will start telling you he will start giving you a word of knowledge how to manipulate your office. You'll be in the office. He will just tell you a word of knowledge how to manipulate your office. How to know what to do, who to talk to, where to go, what not to do. It will be the Holy Ghost giving you that information. See, the word of knowledge is not only for the inside the church. No, no, no. You can be in your business place doing your business. The Spirit of God will give you a word of knowledge of who to talk to, what to do, what business to do, where to go, who to buy from. And you just see your life. I mean, you know, I, I remember I met one, one guy. He owns a restaurant. And then he said that on a particular day, he was trying to cook food. And then he said he talked to the Holy Spirit of what food to cook today. And the Spirit of God told him to cook jollof rice. He was planning to cook fried rice. Thinking that that one would move the market for that day. But he spoke in tongues. And the Spirit of God said, cook jollof rice. Guess what? All the rice he cooked, he sold everything. And people were asking for more. Why? Because he listened to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit can help you in your entire life. I'm telling the truth. Where your examination doesn't matter. It can help. I mean, He wants to be involved in every area of your life, even in parenting your children. Sometimes you want to use your own way. So God will tell you, no. Tell him this. Tell him this. Act this way, and you begin to see results. Why? Because you are downloading from the realm of the Spirit. Glory to God. But listen, the fastest way in entering the realm of the Spirit is speaking in tongues. Because speaking in tongues is the doorway to the supernatural. Let me explain. If you take a boat, how many of you know a, a, a canoe, right? And you put it on land. How effective is that canoe? <laughs> it's almost like useless, right? But guess what? If you take that same canoe and put it on the water, what happens? It can take you to anywhere. That's what speaking in tongues does to your human spirit. When you speak in tongues, it carries you and puts you in the water of God. And then guess what? You cannot assess many other things. You can go to the deepest part of God. You can begin to see the deepness of God. You can begin to enjoy the deepness of God, the heights of God, the lengths of God, and the breadth of God. Why? Because you have learned the art of activating your human spirit. Glory to God. So God wants us to pray in the spirit, not pray in our flesh. You know, some of you, you have this um, systematic way of praying. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. That we will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And do not. Forgive us, eh? continue. Uh huh. Lead us not. But what? Uh huh. For. Uh huh. The power and the glory forever. You know what? That is not prayer, that is prayer templates. Jesus was giving them a template of prayer. That when you start praying, you start with thanksgiving and end with thanksgiving. And then you put your request in the middle. Sandwich prayer. That's what it's called. It's called the sandwich formula prayer. See, it's, 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 first he started to thank God. I used for I used for Then he thanked God at the end. The two bread. And he put his meat in, in the center. Ask God for things he wanted. It's formula for prayer. It's not the prayer you should be praying. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. Yeah, because, for instance, you have a brother who is unsaved. How would that prayer help him? Or you have your business you are going through. How would that prayer help your business? It's not going to help you. How would that prayer help you for your school fees? It's not going to help you for your school fees. And you say, Father, give us our daily bread. Mm -mm, God has already given you bread for life. It's no longer daily bread. It's bread for life. Glory to God. 
Yes, Jesus said, I'm the bread that came from heaven. And anyone that eats of me and drink of me will never hunger, will never taste. So once you drink in Christ, you are satisfied forevermore. Glory to God. You see that? And then we don't, you know, the prayer says, forgive us our debt as we forgive our debtors. That's not New Testament prayer. New Testament prayer is we forgive because he has already forgiven us. Hallelujah. So we are not trying to forgive so that God will forgive us. No, no, no. He has already forgiven us all our sins, past, present, and future. And because we know the debt of our forgiveness, we cannot hold anything against anybody. We have no right to not forgive anybody. We must forgive because Christ forgave us all our sins. New Testament prayer of prayer. Listen, brothers and sisters, when you study the New Testament, new covenant prayer is more of spiritual prayer than material prayer. Check most of our, our prayers. Father God, give me money. Give me school fees. Give me opportunity. Check. If we, we put that prayer now, everybody will be praying. They will be praying. When I say pray, that God will open your understanding. You just ask them quiet. Oh Lord, open my understanding. I say pray. Never, never, never say pray that God will ensure that all the help parts of your destiny will come to you now. Hey, back up. You see the energy of prayer. Because you don't understand new covenant prayer. Listen, if God gives you everything in your spirit, it will happen in the physical realm. Hallelujah. No, you know, you know, Paul said that I pray that God will strengthen you with might in your inner man. Hey, if I'm strengthened with might in my inner man, there's nothing that can stop me in the physical realm. Nothing. There's no matter I can bring down when I'm strengthening my inner man. Talking about a human spirit. It's spiritual prayer. So the more, in the New Testament, it is more of spiritual prayer than physical prayer. And that's the reason why we've got to pray in the spirit. We pray in the spirit. The more you pray in the spirit, the more your spirit gets a glow. And the more your spirit gets a glow, the more everything in the physical realm obeys you. Why would Jesus stand up and talk to wind, talk to the sea, talk to fish, talk to, to trees? How can he do those things? You think he was just sleeping? That time he was sleeping, he has already finished praying in the spirit. Bible said he will go to the mountain and pray. He will pray for two hours. What's he praying? Father, bless me. Father, expand me. Do you think that was his praying? No, 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 no. He was praying in the spirit like we do today. Manta Karabaya, Rade Keba. But say one day he was praying. The you know, someone say, what I, What's the problem? Say, there's no problem. Oh. We are just charging our human spirit. We are charging our human spirit. And guess what? When you pray like that, your spirit gets a glow. Remember, the Bible tells that Jesus Christ was transfigured. Are you following? He was transfigured. That the, the, the Bible said that when the disciples saw him, they said, Hey, Jesus, let's build tents and sleep here. Brothers and sisters, when you pray with your spirit, when you pray in the spirit, your human spirit gets a glow. You also experience that same thing you experience. You are also transfigured. That's the reason why when you pray with your spirit long enough, you feel like you're a liar. You feel like there's nothing you cannot do. Why? Because your spirit is charged. And that's the real you. That's the real you. Say, I'm a champion. Say, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Say, there's nothing that is too good for me. Hey, are you young when I say there's nothing that is too good for me? Say, I'm blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Say, I'm making progress. I'm moving forward by the power of the Holy Ghost. Say, nothing can stop me. Say, nothing can stop me. Say, I'm a champion for life. Say, I'm a success forever. Somebody lift your hands above your head and begin to declare and declare over your life. Prophesy into your life. Prophesy into your destiny. Prophesy the word of God concerning your life. Nothing in my hand dies in the name of Jesus. Whatever God puts in my hand multiplies. It increases on the left, on the right. I'm expanding on every side by the power of the Holy Ghost. Min krunta kaske frantala haske labaya. Barake bonte ke varamante kiva. Li baratonske frantala haske labaya. Rondomonske pelegeve dizabara gataya.